Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back. Of course I'm back. I'm not going anywhere. Boost! <laughs> I'm YouTube famous now. As if. The album, Dad AF. Available in 2018, the retro remix. Affiliate link below. Um, I was gonna sing Moon River on here because I was so moved. It's one of my all-time favorite songs, uh, but, and I love the movie Breakfast at Tiffany's. One of my all-time favorite movies that I used to watch with my mom back in the day. And Frank Ocean just put out a version of Moon River. Have you guys heard it? It's amazing. Go listen to it if you haven't heard it. I'll try to link it below. Um, every time I say I'm gonna link stuff, I always forget to link stuff, so I apologize. Um, but, my mother at her funeral wanted by the gravesite a lone guitar player to play Moon River and for everybody to sing. And so if I start singing that song, I'll probably just lose it and start crying. And that's not what we want in this video. That's more of a video like on my Peterisms channel or where I tell stories of my life or on my vlog channel. Go follow them, please. So anyway, um, <clears throat> if you watch my channel on a regular basis, you know that I do drama primarily around like the beauty drama community, right? But in the last six months, I really talked about how, you know, like certain YouTubers are problematic and what I like to see from them. And a lot of them over time have kind of changed. It's, it's interesting to me, you know? And I do believe that we need to offer people the ability to change and become better human beings. And I preach on all of my channels, <laughs> preach, preach, um, remain teachable. And I say that to myself on a daily basis. You know, when I'm going through something, you know, and I, I don't really know how to handle it, I'm like, okay, Peter, remain teachable, remain teachable. And that's why I'm always open to criticism, constructive criticism on my channels or when people message me and things like that. One of the questions I get a lot is, um, where do I see the direction of YouTube moving? You know, going forward 2018, 2019, and 2020. You know, we're past the 10 year mark of YouTube being around. And um, I think they have, you know, firmly planted their foundation in the world. People say to me on a regular basis, YouTube's going away. I, I don't believe that. I do not believe that YouTube is going away. But I do think that YouTube is going to change. And I think that we're going to see a lot of things with like YouTube TV. And I think we're going to see it change in the way that we understand it. But I also think that it'll stay the same. What I do believe will happen with who gets the most views, who gets the most subscribers, and who grows the most in the next couple years is that I truly believe that we're going to see a renaissance on YouTube. And what I mean by that is that I think the YouTubers who are truly individuals, okay, who embrace their individuality and embrace their just uh, I don't know, their, their own essence and they don't apologize for it. And I think those people, and they also use their platform to educate, whether it's through humor or whether it's through makeup, but they use their platform in a way to, you know, not like in a beauty pageant contestant kind of way, but they use it to, you know, continue to inspire and motivate others. I believe those will be the YouTubers that stay around. And uh, whether it's Amelia Fart, who I adore, you guys know that. And, um, you know, I think she does it through humor. And I think she does it through relatability. When people watch her videos, it's like she's doing the things that they wish they could do, like, in their heads. But it's so crazy and out there that they can't. Or whether it's John McLean, you know, who is a makeup artist, you know, in the UK. And if you don't know who he is... He is a YouTuber that has um, about 100, I think I just looked, 177,000 subscribers. He's grown a lot in the last year. And um, he does a lot of like makeup tutorials, reviews, things like that. And he is a makeup artist. I adore his videos. I absolutely adore his videos. And every time I watch them, whether it is, you know, just... Ugh, I don't know, like whether he's doing like, one of my favorite videos of his actually is this makeup tutorial he does on makeup for men. And I wanted to recreate it on my channel for a long time. And I, it's very impressive to me watching it. And he makes it very simple. He kind of dumbs it all down for the person that doesn't really know much about makeup, which is what I love. But you know, a lot of people, I did a video um, probably six months ago called John McClain Exposed. And a lot of times on my channel, like, I'll expose somebody that I just found that I love. And so people come to it and they're like, don't come for John McLean. And I'm like, I'm not coming for him. Like, I love him. That's why I called it an exposed video. And um, it's interesting because that video is one of my most viewed videos ever on my channel. It's also one of the view videos that I, I personally have gotten the nastiest comments on. People come to it and they're like, why are you talking? I'm like, just watch the video. I love the guy, right? So I'll link it at the end of the video or end of this video and you guys can go check it out if you want to see it. 
but I've watched him for a long time, and uh, yesterday he put out a Q&A video, and it's his second Q&A that he's ever done, his uh, second Q&A film that he's ever done, and I, like, I think <laughs> this is the thing. You can't take John too seriously unless he's being serious, if that makes sense. Like, he has this very kind of subtle humor that I just sit there and I just, like, lose my shit, right? And, you know, like, it's just in this way that he says certain things. Or in the, one of the questions he gets in this Q&A is, why do you always wear black? And he says, I don't just always wear black. And I'm going to link the video below. I want everybody to go watch it. It's Well, first of all, I'm going to address some very important things in there, which is why this video is says something about like let's talk but um because to me it was one of the most profound videos I have seen from a beauty influencer since Wayne Goss did a video about a month and a half ago and I love Wayne Goss and he knows that um about a month and a half ago I think the video was called this is important um so if you haven't seen that video go see it it is a really important video but this video today that I watched, I was blown away. I watched it two times and then a third time to take notes. And I just literally sat there. I mean, I was like this the whole time with everything that he said. And, um, but if you go in there, he does a question about what kind of, why he always wears black. And his answer to it is just, it's so hilarious. Like, he's so shady, but like in such a, such a subtle way that people don't realize it's shade. It's like... It's the way it's supposed to be done. So anyway, um, I adore him. But I watched this video today, and he gets this question in there about representation and, it, it, you know, and the word queer and things like that. And I'm not going to talk about the whole thing. I'm going to talk about the points he made because... <laughs> He literally could make, write a self-help book just on this video alone. I have one, two, three, four, five points that he made in this video that I, honest to God, and this is where the Remain Teachable part comes for me, these are things that I talk about indirectly in all of my videos, but they're things that put into the context, the video is 18 minutes long, and this is about eight minutes of the video. In the context of eight minutes, it is so profound. I mean, I almost, to be honest with you, wish he had just taken, oh, I'm losing my notes. He had just taken these eight minutes and just made that a video. It is, it is so incredibly wise. And so let's get right into it. Um, he says in there that uh, he, this question about being queer and whatever, and he says he doesn't use that word. And he says in there, we have to be very, very careful of the language that we use and, you know, in life. And he's not talking about in videos. He's not talking about YouTube and things like that. He's talking about in life. We need to be very careful of the language that we use. And I've said that a lot on my channel. And it's interesting because I always get the comment that words don't mean anything. And it depends on who you're talking to. You know, like to my husband, certain words mean nothing to him. But to me, words mean a lot. And so it really depends on who you're talking to. You know, one of the things that my mom used to say to me back in the day was, when you're talking to somebody, at some point, if you, like, she, she would say this to me in regards of using profanity. She would say, the, people stop listening to what you say, and they only listen to how you say it. And so, depending on the words that we use, we cut people off right away, and we may lose, you know, that time to get our point across with somebody that we, it's really important for us to have a conversation with. So I really love that he said that. And <clears throat> one of the things that he said in there, and I was like, when he was saying this, I was just like, I paused it for a second. I really thought about it. He said that, you know, um, a lot of us buy into the derogative. He was talking about the words that are used out there and the things like that. And that, you know, when we get upset about that or when we like, you know, respond, re react to it, not respond. And he talks in there about how he chooses to respond, not react, which is how I try to live my life today. I don't always do it, but I try to. And um, he says in there, you know, that when he, like, responds today, he really tries to think of where that person is coming from, what their point of view is. You know, and it's very much like I say in the To Kill a Mockingbird analogy, it's Atticus Finch, you know? You don't really know somebody until you walk around in their shoes on their front porch. And that's really kind of the entire message of his video. And I just was blown away by it, you know? At the end of it, and I'm not going to address this in there, he does this whole thing where he talks about gender, like masculinity versus femininity. And his whole opinion about it, uh, especially coming from John, was so eye-opening to me. I was like, God, there's so much truth in what he says, you know? And I love videos that aren't just shits and giggles for me. And hey, listen, I need, I need funny videos too, you know? I mean, I watch videos all the time just to crack up and like ease my day and stuff like that. But at the same time, I really like, I really like and appreciate YouTubers that use their platform to educate. And then I can sit there and go, wow. And like walk away from it and that I learned something, you know? 
Um, the next thing that he said, and this was about talking about, you know, like, he was addressing the, uh, that the, you know, derivative of the word queer can also mean strange. And he was talking about, like, whether you're strange or somebody else is strange or if we think they're strange. And the exact quote, which is so beautiful, somebody needs to make, a, like, a meme out of this, is, my life is the norm to me and your life is the norm to you. And when he said that, I just was, like, so blown away. I was like, yes, like... You know, and I all the time on my channels and, and just in life, you know, I tell people, embrace your weirdness, you know, embrace being different, you know, but really what it's about is not that at all. It's about embracing your individuality, embracing who you are as a person, loving yourself. I talked about this at length last night on my vlog, you know, loving yourself enough to be true to who you are because nobody really else in the world ever matters. And, you know, we're on borrowed time as it is. Life is short. Um, one of the other things he says, I want to get these in order because I don't want to put them out of order. Um, <clears throat> he talked about like in how he addresses people. He said he doesn't deal with people on what they are. He prefers to deal with people on the basis of who they are, dictated by what they do and what they choose to do. And I was like, you know what? That is like such a profound statement that instead of like talking to people about what they can do for us or how they identify or all those kinds of things, let's see how they treat us as human beings. Like, let's see what they put out there into the world. Do their actions speak louder than words? Who are they really as people? And, and, I, and I loved that, you know? Um, and then he said in here that... Uh, this was the most powerful part of the entire video, and, he, and this was like what the whole eight minutes was really about. That we need to teach children from a small age self-responsibility, responsibility, self-respect, self and liberty. And he goes into this whole definition of liberty and why liberty is so important. And then he goes in and he says um, that we need to teach people that they do not have the right to have agency over the life of another regardless of what they are or who they are. And no one has the right to have agency over your life as well. And, um, I mean, I just goosebumps. I mean, it was such an aha moment for me. As somebody that has grown up, you know, from a young age being bullied and then gotten over that and, you know, learned how to just kind of deal with that and, you know, have been in work environments before where I felt like I had to, like, I needed this person, you know, for a paycheck and things like that. And I have been in situations in my life where it was very obvious that people felt like they had agency. They had ownership over who I was as a person. To hear those words said so softly and so, you know, with such subtlety was so powerful. I mean, you want to talk about liberty. It was liberating for me to hear that. I was like, hell yes. Nobody has the right to say things about me. Do that. You know, like that. Nobody has that right. Nobody. Nobody. And it reminded me of um, the Viktor Frankl book. I think it's the Viktor Frankl book, Man's Meaning of Life. When, you know, he had talked about in interviews and things that, you know, when he was uh, at the concentration camps, that they would, like, walk him and a family member or walk him and a friend, you know, to the gas chambers. And what he learned through that was that, and then they would, you know, he, they, it was kind of this test that they were teaching him. And what he learned through it was that they could take away his clothes. They could take away his um, hair. They could, you know, take away food from him. They could take away everything they possibly could, but they could not take away his pride and they could not take away his integrity. And, you know, I think that we have to remember that in life. And um, I read a lot about history that has happened to the world and how survivors made it through because that gives me strength because I think to myself, living in the conditions of the world that I live in and having this most amazing life and I have so much to be grateful for, if they can think that way, so can I. And I just, I thought that this was so powerful when he said, he goes in there about education and that we're doing education all wrong. I mean, he doesn't say that, but he, he says we need to be teaching children instead of maybe, you know, some of this bullshit that we teach them. Maybe we need to be teaching them self-responsibility. Maybe we need to teach them self-respect. Maybe we need to teach them you do not have the right to treat another person the way that, you know, you've treated them or to treat somebody that, with respect and with responsibility. Meet them where you're at. And I think it's such a valuable lesson, you know, when we 
talk about bullying in the school systems, and I think things personally are 10 times worse than they were when I was in high school. I really do. And, um, you know, it makes me sad, and bullying in the work environment, and bullying between friends, and bullying in families, and, you know, just other people, you know, having ownership over other people's lives, and it's so sad, right? And nobody has the right to do that. Nobody. So even if you're not in a position where you can, like, get out of that immediately, say to yourself, I deserve better. I deserve liberty. Because I think it's invaluable. Um... And then the last thing that he said that was, I just love this so much. He said, we need to be growing a race of human beings that take full responsibility for themselves and their own actions. We need to ingrain a sense of self-responsibility. I just was blown away. I just was like, thank you, somebody. I mean, and this is the thing that I love about this, right? Is that... When YouTubers, like, I mean, it's not like his channel is about motivation. It's not like his channel is about inspiration. It's not like he's a TED Talks channel, okay? Which he should be. After this video, TED Talks should call him up and put him in a video, honest to God. But, you know, it's like he's using this platform of people that love makeup, and they love makeup tutorials, and they love him as a person. And he's talking about these things in the context of a QA, and a and he's really opening people's eyes, mine included, to a different way of thinking about the world. And isn't that phenomenal? Isn't that what we should be doing with YouTube? That we should be bringing lessons to the world, remaining teachable. We can do that through humor, okay? We can do that through beauty. We can do that through gaming. We can do that through candle reviews. We can do it with whatever context we do it. But we can teach and remain teachable on a daily basis. John, I want to thank you for this video. This video was phenomenal. You really awoke inside of me today a feeling of self-respect and a feeling of inspiration towards taking back my own independence and sometimes I forget that and you know it's like the saying and I said this last night in my video uh, on my vlog channel it's like the saying from pretty woman you know when Richard Gere tells Julia Roberts you're so beautiful and she says the bad stuff is easier to believe when somebody tells you something long enough you start to believe it it's it's time to stop believing the lie. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.